Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about sixth grade math, specifically the greatest common factor. Okay, so let's talk about what the greatest common factor is, or sometimes as we call it, the GCF for short. So what that is, is when you have two numbers and you're being asked to find the greatest common factor that those two numbers have. You're being asked to find the largest factor that those two numbers have in common. So the easiest way to show this is with an example. Let's say you're being asked to find the greatest common factor between the numbers 20 and 50. Okay, so there's two different ways to do this. I'll show you one way first, then I'll erase it and show you the second way. And you can always decide which way makes the most sense to you. So for 20, the first way we do it is we kind of just make a list of factors. So the factors of 20 would be 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. Then the factors of 50 would be 1 times 50, 2 times 25. Um, I don't think 3 works. I don't think 4 works. I know 5 works because you get 5 times 10. 6 doesn't work because 2 and 3 both have to work for 6 to work. 7 doesn't work, 8 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work, and then we're right back to 10. Okay, so these are the factors of these two numbers. Now I can look through the factors and see which ones they have in common. So they both have a 1, they both have a 2, mm, only one of them has a 4, they both have a 5, they both have a 10, and those are all the ones they have in common. So the largest one that they have in common is this 10 right here. So the GCF, or greatest common factor for these two numbers, is 10. So that's one way to do it. Here's another way. This involves breaking down each of the numbers to, its, to their prime factors. So as you know, we've talked about prime factorization before. And if you haven't seen that video, go back and look up that video, and that'll teach you how to do prime factorization. So I'm going to start by breaking down 20 into 2 times 10. I know two is prime, so I'm not gonna break that one down any further, but I know 10 can be broken down to two times five. So I've already broken this one down to its prime factors. For 50, I can do five times 10. I know five is prime, so I'm gonna leave that alone, but 10 can be broken down to two times five. So once I've completed the prime factorization for both numbers, I'm gonna look for prime factors they have in common. That would include a two here, and a two here. So they both have a two. So my GCF is going to include a two. They have a two in common. Now what I like to do here is I like to cross them off. So I know that I've already used them. There we go. Make it really crossed off. Okay. So next I have a five here and another five here. So they have a five in common. So that's going to be part of my GCF as a five. I'm going to go ahead and cross these off. Well, the remaining five prime factors are not the same. 50 has five left and 20 has two left. So those are not the same and therefore they're not in common. So the GCF, I would come back here and re-multiply these prime factors back together. So the greatest common factor is 10. So as you can see, I got the same answer as I did before. All right, let's do some practice problems. Okay, here's our first practice problem. We're gonna find the greatest common factor or the GCF of four and 10. So since I showed you two different ways to do it, I'm gonna alternate the different ways that I do it for these practice problems. So the GCF of four and 10, I'm gonna start by doing four and 10 here. For this one, I'm just gonna make a list of factors. So for four, I know I can do one times four and two times two. And again, we don't need to list it twice, but that's okay. For 10, I can do one times 10 and two times five. Okay, so as I'm looking through, I'm looking for ones they have in common. So they both have a one, they both have a two, and that's where the common factors end. So the largest of those common factors is two, making the GCF for four and 10, the number two. Okay, here's the next one. We're gonna find the greatest common factor or GCF of eight and six. So I'm going to go ahead and write 8 here and 6 here. For this one, I'll use the prime factorization method. So I'm going to break 8 down to 4 times 2. 
4 is not prime, but I can break it down to 2 times 2, which is prime. And then I also have another 2 over there. So prime factorization for 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. For 6, I can break that down to 2 times 3. So now that I've got both of those complete, I can go through and look for the ones they have in common. Well, I see a 2 here and a 2 here. So I know my GCF is going to include a 2. And I can cross those off. And now I go back and look, and I don't see anything else they have in common. 8 has two twos left, and 6 only has a 3 left. So that means the GCF for these two numbers is 2. Here's our next one. We're going to find the greatest common factor for 6 and 15. So I'm going to put a 6 here and a 15 here. For this one, I'm just going to list factors. So for 6, I know I could do 1 times 6, or I could do 2 times 3. For 15, I could do 1 times 15. 2 doesn't work because it's not an even number, but 3 does because I could do 3 times 5. Okay, so I'm going to go through and look for the ones they have in common. They both have a 1. Uh, only 1, 2 over here. Ooh, they both have a 3. And that is the last one they have in common. So the biggest common factor that these two numbers share is 3, making that our GCF. Here's our next one. We're going to find the greatest common factor of 9 and 15. So I'm going to go ahead and write 9 over here and 15 over here. For this one, I think I'll use the prime factorization method. So I'm going to break down the 9 to 3 times 3, which are both prime numbers, so I don't have to keep going there. And then I'm going to break down 15 to 5 times 3. Again, those are both prime numbers, so I know I'm done with my prime factorization there. The ones I have in common are a 3 here and a 3 here. So I know my GCF is going to include a 3. I'm going to cross those off. And when I go back and look, I don't see any other prime factors that they have in common. So the GCF, or greatest common factor for these two numbers, is going to be 3. Okay, here is our last practice problem for today. Find the greatest common factor, or GCF, of 5 and 3. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing 5 over here and 3 over here. Now, the only factors I can think of for 5 are 1 times 5, and the only factors I can think of for 3 are 1 times 3. That makes them both prime numbers. And sometimes we're asked to do this, or to find the GCF with a prime number involved. So the only factor they have in common is the one. So if you're asked to do this, the greatest common factor of these two numbers would be one. And that is okay to get as an answer, especially if you're dealing with one or more prime numbers that you're being asked to find. All right, that is it for today. Thank you.